Penta means five. Five-sided shape, that's a pentagon. Since a pentagon has five sides, it's easy to see how five dots can be used to form a pentagon. It's also possible to arrange 12 dots in the shape of a pentagon, and even 22 dots can be used. Of course, numbers like these that can be arranged into pentagon shapes get a special name. Naturally, they're called pentagonal numbers. Oh, but of course, that's not how it works. Even though the shapes are called pentagons, somehow everybody agreed to call the numbers pentagonal. So it's not pentagonal, it is instead pentagonal. Everybody seems to agree on this and no one really has a problem with it, but not all things in mathematics are quite so straightforward. I'm going to tell you a variety of math things that I hate pronouncing, or there's just some disagreement about how it should be pronounced. I'll give a brief explanation of the terms as well, so you'll understand what we're talking about. You can skip around the terms with the video chapters, and they're not in any particular order except for the last one, which is what I hate pronouncing the most, and it might surprise you. Something we use in mathematics a lot is what's called a subscript. A subscript is a tiny character written just below a larger character. They're often used to index terms of a sequence. For example, for example, this is the famous Fibonacci sequence, where the first two terms are 1, and the next term is found by summing the previous two. 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, and so on. Since these are terms of the Fibonacci sequence, one might want to refer to all of the terms with the letter F. However, there are infinitely many terms in the sequence, so this notation would be lacking if I say to consider F, well, which term are we talking about? And that's where those subscripts come in. This could be F1, this is F2, this is F3, this is F4, this is F5, and so on. And then this one back at the star is F0, or is it F0? In American English, we would generally read this subscript as zero, so it would be pronounced F0. I always found this a bit clunky though. I mean, look at all these other terms. It's really punchy. F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6. Everything's a single syllable, but then this one is zero. It's two whole syllables. Well, in British English, they get around this by referring to a term like this as F0. Not, not of course, standing in for zero. I've occasionally tried to use this, but the thing is, American students just aren't used to it, and it causes more trouble than it's worth in my experience. I am jealous though, I'm sick of saying this, maybe we can make a change, who knows. Everybody knows that if you take a square and then extend it into three dimensions, we get what's called a box. That's straightforward enough, and there's no controversy about the word box, but what if we take a parallelogram and extend that into three dimensions? Then you get this quirky shape with a hell of a name. How would you pronounce that? It's not so much that this word is tricky to pronounce, but it's a bit overwhelming to look at. Turns out most agree on the pronunciation of parallelopiped, though I've also heard parallelepiped. Personally, I'm on team parallelopiped. It's just too much fun to say. I mean, just try it. Parallelopiped, parallelopiped, bam, 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 parallelopiped. Here's one for you. How do you say this? That's right, this is latex, that weird stretchy stuff that makes some people, uh, uh, well, uh, let's just say we write it this way, then how do you pronounce it? Well, obviously it's still latex, but what if you write it like this? How do you pronounce it now? Now it's pronounced latex or latex. Yes, this is no longer referring to the weird stretchy stuff, but rather a typesetting language that is used in a lot of scientific and certainly mathematical papers. It is richly featured with formatting complex mathematics. For a lot of math majors, one of the biggest hurdles is understanding and writing proofs. One of the other biggest hurdles is figuring out how to write your homework in LaTeX. 
If we take a positive integer like 5 and multiply it by all the positive integers less than or equal to it, we get something like this, and there's a nice notation for that, 5 with an exclamation point on the right. More generally, a positive integer n multiplied by all of the positive integers less than or equal to it, all the way down to 1, is written as n with an exclamation point. How is this pronounced? Well, people with the laziest senses of humor in the world pronounce it N, and the rest of us just call it N factorial. Here's a cute little symbol for you. This means there exists. For example, there exist over a hundred books published to the Math Sorcerer's Amazon storefront since December 25th of last year. But how do you pronounce the symbol? Well, since it's just an E backwards, you pronounce it just like an E, but backwards. For a practical example, perhaps there's a set of letters which we're denoting uppercase E. And maybe in this set of letters is the letter lowercase E. So then E is in that set, uppercase E. This symbol means is in. And then we would read this as E, E, N, E. The symbols or terms with controversial pronunciations are the worst because no matter how you say them, you're going to get people criticizing you. This is a Greek letter spelled like this and also sometimes written like this. But how the heck do you say it? Is it phi or is it phi? And what the heck does it have to do with math anyway? My recent research suggests that most people agree the pronunciation is with an I, right? It's phi, not phi. But there's certainly still plenty of disagreement. Suppose we pronounce it as phi. What does phi have to do with math? Well, besides the fact that math has adopted all Greek letters, and so it certainly belongs to us, there is the more concrete fact that it's a symbol used to represent what's called the golden ratio. This great little piece from sketchplanations.com, link in the description, gives a nice quick rundown of places you might have seen the golden ratio, and you can see here it's about 1.618. One of the coolest facts about the golden ratio is, remember that Fibonacci sequence we discussed earlier? Well, if you look at ratios of consecutive terms from this sequence, like 2 divided by 1, 3 divided by 2, 5 divided by 3, and so on, those ratios will approach the golden ratio. That's really cool even if we can't agree on how to pronounce it. If you think it should be phi, do you think that pi should also be p? And on March 14th, we all celebrate P Day? I have my reservations. Just like P, I should point out, phi is an irrational number. If we want to express it exactly, it's one plus the square root of five divided by two. Oh, and speaking of irrational, that's another one I absolutely hate. Oh, this word peels my onions. Listen closely, okay? I'm going to say two sentences. One of them is true and one of them is false. Sentence one, three is irrational. Sentence two, Three is irrational. Which sentence is true? Which sentence is false? I hate this word. My first sentence was false. I said three is irrational. Irrational means that it can't be expressed as a ratio of two integers. Three, of course, can be expressed in that way. Three over one, for example. So this sentence, not true. But the second sentence, which sounded exactly the same, was three is a rational. That is true. Three is a rational number. Because of this potential for confusion, when I pronounce this word, I really lean into the I. I hardly even pronounce it as an I. I use more of an E sound. I say irrational. You gotta rip it off slowly like painstaking duct tape. Irrational. P is an irrational number. I say it this way for clarity. Irrational. Yet people always bully me for it in the the comments and it makes me sad. Saying it the way I do, irrational, you might not like how I'm saying this word, but you know I'm saying this word. What the heck is this and how do you say it? This is the derivative operator. It would operate on a function, so typically next to it would be some function like f. And this would often be read as df dx or simply the derivative of f. It's a very beautiful thing from calculus. The derivative 
derivative of a function is itself a function. Let's say that this is my function f. If we go to any point on this function, you can imagine a line passing through that point going in the direction of the function. Like at this point here, my line might look like this. This is called a tangent line. Clearly this line is sloping upwards. Its slope is positive. Whereas if we go over here, let's say, the line that hits that point and goes in the direction of the function looks something like that. That line is going downwards and has a negative slope. The derivative gives us the slopes of these tangent lines, and we think of it as telling us the direction of a function at any particular point. It's a constant part of our work in calculus, and so it's important to know how to say it. While there's a perfectly fine set of options for something like this, it is occasionally the case that we would read d over d dx all by itself. And we could read it like that, d over dx, but oftentimes people will read it as d by dx. Think of it like the fraction representing division by, that's where this pronunciation kind of comes from, d by dx. But if you're saying it a lot and you get a little careless, d by dx, d by dx, d by dx, d by dx, it eventually just becomes d by dx. And then this is d by do, d by da, and d by dumb. Oftentimes, rather than taking the derivative of a function called f, we might be taking the derivative of a function called y, and we can put the function real close with the d, like this, if we want. And there's a group of terrorists out there that pronounce this as die dicks. And then what about this? This is what's called the natural logarithm. There's a famous irrational number, much like pi, called e. And if we plug a number into the natural log function, it actually outputs the power we must raise e to to get that number we plugged into it. So if we plug in e, it will spit out one because you must raise e to the power of one to get e. Similarly, if we plugged e to the power of 4 into the natural log function, we would get 4, because e must be raised to the power of 4 to get e to the 4. For a less trivial example, the natural log of 2 is about 0.69, and that's because e to the power of 0.69 is about 2. But how do we pronounce this function? Perhaps the most fastidious pronunciation is what I've been using, which is to just call it the natural log. Log standing for logarithm, which refers to a whole class of functions. The natural log has a base of e. The natural log of 2 is about 0.69 because a base of e raised to 0.69 is about 2. But a logarithm could have any base we like. For example, log base 10 is common. Log base 10 of 100, for example, is 2 because 10 to the power of 2 is 100. For young students just learning about this stuff, log base 10 is often taken as the default. So if you just say log, you assume it's base 10. However, for many fields of mathematics, the preferred base is not 10, but a base of e, which is the natural log. Thus, many people, myself included, will read this simply as log. In fact, a lot of people will even write it simply as log, without specifying the base, understanding that the base either doesn't matter or is assumed to be e. Other people still will pronounce it not as log or natural log, but the abbreviated l n. Others will just mush the letters together and just call it lawn. These issues are contentious. I like to just call it log, but I understand for some people that's confusing, so perhaps I should reconsider. Perhaps nothing is more difficult than the names of famous mathematicians which could get a video all in itself. There is, of course, the extremely gifted Indian mathematician Ramanujan, and you can pronounce his name however you like, research as much as you please to find the correct pronunciation, and people will still tell you you're wrong and make a big stink out of it. Is it Ramanujan? 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 I believe the stress is supposed to be on the M-A, as in Ramanujan, but I still can't say it in a way that doesn't upset people. In my experience, the only name that's on a similar tier in terms of controversial pronunciation is this one. Encountered by calculus students the world over, it's more commonly spelled in this way. L'hôpital? 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 L'hospital? L'hospital? I only have so much energy for this stuff, man. All right, 
Let's get to the final boss, the math thing I hate saying the most. There could be a great big discussion about fractions, you know, one over two. How do we say that? One over two, one half, one second. What about larger fractions like one over 21? Is it one twenty-first, one twenty-one-th? Perhaps it doesn't matter so much. I mean, how often do you encounter this fraction? Generally, the fractions with smaller denominators are encountered much more often, and there is one among them which reigns supreme in the pain that it delivers to any mortal wishing to pronounce it. Yes, there is no single math thing I hate pronouncing more than fractions with a six in the denominator. And I really don't get how everybody else just seems okay with this. This seems like a me thing. Thing. Other people don't have an issue with this. But look at the end of this word, man. It's absolutely diabolical. This whole word is one syllable, and just this last part I've underlined is such a complicated sound, I cannot stand it. What do you have to squeeze into this fraction of a syllable? You need a K sound, you need an S sound, you need a TH sound, and then you need one last S sound. What the heck? This is truly demonic. Five sixths. It's horrible. I, I feel like I have to respect the pronunciation. It is what it is. Sixths. That's insane. Why is that? Why is that the word? That's preposterous. Sixths. It's like the single longest one syllable word uh, I could ever imagine. However much time I've spent in my life talking about math, probably a good 10% of it is on saying the last four letters of the word sixths. What a f stupid word. I mean, couldn't it have just been like an S sound or a KS sound? Why did we need all of this? K that's insanity! Again, no one else seems to be talking about this, and, and that's part of why I feel so strongly. I've had classes where students are like, oh, you've you've got to stop saying sixths like that. And I'm like, what do you mean? That's that's how it's said, sixths, sixths. I don't like it, but that's that's what it says. So I've tried to lay back and just just be casual about it, you know? Try to be more of a, of a calm, cool, collected guy when it comes to pronouncing my fractions that have six in the denominator. Because there is the thought that, well, it hardly sounds any different if you were to just say five six instead of five sixths, right? I mean, would anyone be confused if instead of saying this, we said this? I try it, but I just don't like it. I, I'm like, I'm looking at this and I'm saying something totally different. Instead of saying what it is, five sixths, I'm saying five six. I, I just can't do it. I have too much integrity for that, man. So instead, I'm going to suffer. Anyway, I mean, this is just horrible. If y'all could please rant about how disgusting this word is and how right I am about this in the comments, that would be awesome. All right, I can't even bear to look at that word anymore. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think about all these fun pronunciations and if there are any math terms that you have really strong feelings about. Consider joining as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to all sorts of fun videos and exclusive exclusive original music. Be sure to subscribe as well for the swankiest math videos on the internet. Invisible, twisted enough to cut noodle with a sentence to wonder if I'm worth a stitch in this situation. Often off of injury, flux and os and a hill of pillification. Vilification, my indication indicated doesn't better than kids and it added to it a little bit by my education. Ah, doozy doo to brouhaha, woozy at the stew a lot. My brain crews long like chihuahuas, tie rahumara, my bar is hard.